Happy New Year! Happy 2020! Did we survive? I hope so. It's me, Grace Helbig, with another episode of Not Too Deep, the first one of this new year. I have with me Elliot Morgan. You might know him from the Valley Folk. You might know him as a comedian and his stand-up special, Holy Shit. Uh, and what we did is we uh, we took some of your questions. We uh, gave you some advice to help you enter 2020 with the best of your thriving abilities from two very non-thriving, low-key adults this episode. Enjoy the first episode of 2020 Not Too Deep with Elliot Morgan. No, not too deep. We have support today from Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. They have beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything so you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. And if you get stuck, Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support is there to help you out. So head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. We're going, Elliot Morgan. Thank you for having me, Grace. I didn't even welcome you here, but you're here. It's wonderful. Thanks. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for being here. The first episode of Not Too Deep 2020. We're recording this on uh, November 18th. So there's plenty of time between now and January 6th <laughs> when this airs for things to, uh, like, shit, hit things mm-hmm. like, you know, say fans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. You're talking about me and you? Or uh, just in general? Just the, I mean, all of it encompassed. <laughs> I think we're good. I yeah. think we've been. Can you imagine that that's how I start this off? That there is a month and a half for <laughs> you and I to break up before yeah. 2020. I mean, I, I had done the math already, but I didn't, didn't know we were going to leave. But yeah, yeah. The, but I think we'll be, yeah, there's plenty of time for, but it's going to be the holidays. It's going to be the holidays. Well, we'll be coming off of the holidays, which I've learned uh, are your favorite things in the universe. Yeah. You love a good Christmas. I do love a good Christmas. Has I'm this having... always been a disease that you've had? Um, I like I like magical fun things like Santa. Okay. And uh, Mickey Mouse. I mean, I, I like the Disney stuff too. How old were you when you found out that Santa wasn't real? Um, I actually don't remember the... So I, it's still... There's still a chance. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. Maybe like, I think I was a little... It, I felt too old. I okay. remember being like maybe 11 Something like that. But I'd already kind of put it together. And then my mom one day was like, yeah, no. It's not. But oh. before that, she would always say, well, what do you think? And she thought that was a very clever way because she never wanted to lie to her kids and felt weird about the fact that it's a lie. That's a and very, so, and your mom's a psychologist, right? Yeah. So that's a very psychologist mm-hmm. way of talking Just, mm, to your kids about you. major things. Oh and then I would go, what I guess I believe think? in them. Yeah. And they go, well, that's great. And then that's how they perpetuated the... I I learned because my mom was terrible at hiding gifts and then I loved to scavenger hunt. And so every year I was like, cool, can't wait for Santa. You hide the gifts in the bed underneath of it and then up in the closet. Yeah, that's so easy. You start them in November and I every day peek in while you're making your afternoon tea and I... Did you have all wrapped gifts or were some of the gifts unwrapped because that's what Santa left there for you? What? Just that doesn't make any doesn't ring any bells. No, I what? would always have all the wrap. That gifts, Santa but then got tired and one... didn't want to wrap anything. <laughs> yeah, now that I think about it, it was probably just a lazy thing. But he it, he, it's like his. It was like his present, so they would always hide that one really effectively. But then all the other stuff, they would just be like, "Yeah, of course we got you presents." But Santa gets. But no one cares about this right now because it's January six. But I am fascinated um no my stepmom still writes uh to grace from santa on all of the gifts that it's, she gives us that's for beautiful it's beautiful it's beautiful when did you stop believing so, when um i don't know like third okay. grade and i remember telling my friend in sixth grade i remember being the one that broke the news to my friend in sixth grade with oh. my other friend and both of us going oh shit lauren didn't know she still <laughs> believed and we no, were like that's, uh, not, that's sad <laughs> Yeah, record player scratch before I had Final Cut and learned what record player scratch was. Did you say you were sorry or did you say like, well, you're going to find out sometime anyway. So. I said, this is real life, bitch. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said in sixth grade. I'm from New Jersey. That's how hard we were. No, I, saw, I, uh, I like pl- prayed to Jesus that I was forgiven after that. <laughs> um, I saw a license, but on the way here that said NJ Soul. And I was like, oh. 
New Jersey Soul. New Jersey Soul. Yeah. It sounds like maybe like their indoor soccer team or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, anyway, first episode of 2020. New Year's has happened. Christmas is come and gone. Every other holiday is come and gone other than Easter and Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. If you Day. count that one. Uh, I went on Twitter and I asked you guys for questions uh, that are advice driven that you might need help on in the new year. I know it's early as we're recording this in the middle of November, but it's never too early to offer some sound um, advice. So and should we who just better to ask than two people that still believe in Santa mm -hmm. <laughs> are really doing their best. So let's just jump into these, shall we? Let's do it, Grace. I'm excited and nervous. First of all, do you have any resolutions? That's not a question. That's a personal question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> I got things I could do. It's always giving something unhealthy up for a time. Do you like? Well, taking if I can a think step of back. Anything? Do you do resolutions? Like, does that a, is that a thing that you try to abide by? I don't do uh, for fun. I do, but I don't really care enough about. I, I'll do like a like a period of time for mm -hmm. something, but then after that, it's kind of like whatever. But no, I don't really do. I don't really take it seriously. Okay. But then in my mind, I'll be like, oh, I'll do that better. That's not a fun answer. Do you do, you don't, you wouldn't, you don't do risk. I love new beginnings. I love starting over. I think that's because I continuously do bad and I love the opportunity to start over. So I love when the new year that starts. That part's very beautiful. That it's like, hey, let's, uh, let's refresh. Like my browser, like my computer when it freezes. I feel like that's me at the end of the year. Like I just want to refresh everything. It's a very happy time. Yeah. Christmas is so stressful and fun, but yeah, New Year's is very And New Year's happy. very happy for like half a second, and then you realize that you're not going to uphold Nothing's any of the changed. things that you really want to do. Yeah. All right, so, so on that note, it. let's give uh, advice to people that uh, that desperately need it. Uh, okay, how to tell your family you don't want to spend New Year's with them, something you've been doing since you were zero years old. I think this goes, and not just New Year's, like how do you tell your family that you don't want to celebrate something with them as an adult? Yeah, I guess you'd, if it were me, I'd be like, I'm going to switch it up this year and I'm going to go do this instead. Mm -hmm. And then, then their feelings are hurt, <laughs> but they're, they're resilient. I feel like an edible arrangement solves all <laughs> problems. Before? If you deliver like what you, if you deliver That's what you a... assume is going to be bad news, but you wrap it in like a literal bow, I think that. They, okay. It's now a their problem that they can interpret that as being like, I can't believe you wouldn't spend the holidays. You're yeah. like, I can't believe you weren't grateful for the edible arrangement I got you <laughs> to tell you that I wasn't going to spend the holidays. I added the chocolate dip strawberries as an yeah. add-on for you. It's a psychological uh, like double down on yeah. like, now you can pivot and say, hey, you're being ungrateful. Yeah. Or you also recognize that your parents brought you into this world and know better than you. And how dare you want to go do something else for New Year's? I don't care how old you are. It's not worth the conflict. It's not worth getting involved in an argument to assert yourself. You should spend the rest of your life mm -hmm. with your parents celebrating every holiday and yeah. live with them always. One of the most attractive things about an adult human is their stunted growth. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this and how close they could possibly be to their. What were we watching that had the thing where probably something the on Great TLC? Great British Bake Off was one of them, and it was the there's a the reality show with the person that was stunted in their growth. That's every single that's, reality that would show. Be the one, yeah. No, there was something we were watching like last night where they were waiting on. Oh, it was Shark Tank. Oh, Shark Tank. Yeah, where there was literally like living with the parents, and the parents had to. He like looked over before. Yeah. Anyway. If you want to just see stay with them. real stuff, yeah, just, just hang out all the time. Just build up that repressed anger towards your parents and see what happens. Should we establish? Do I need to clarify if I'm being sarcastic? We talked about how sometimes people don't know if I'm being sarcastic or if I'm being. You sarcastic. just did it. Is that good? Perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how do I get the next decade off to the right start in 2020? What's something you will be doing? Heavy That's kind of like a resolution question, right? Yeah. Um, 2020, I don't realize it's the start of a new decade. That's... Hopefully my, by the new year, my foot is healed and I can uh, use it again and not limp. I'd oh. like to not limp into the new year. For those of decade. you that don't know, Elliot has had a foot issue for a few months, um, which is... It's a fungus. 
Is it? No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I need to know if that's actually what this is. <laughs> this is what we're talking about. I heard it was a stress <laughs> fracture. A fungus and a stress fracture are two very different things. Mm-hmm. You didn't see how the doctor kind of winked at me when he told me that. Uh, so yeah. that you couldn't see. Oh, I spilled water. Sorry. The, oh, no. I'm smearing these names. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, Brandon Garner. The um, being injured as an adult is an embarrassing thing. I've heard it would be, and I didn't believe it, and then it happened, and it is. It puts me in a bad mood sometimes. Where I'm like, "Why am I in a bad mood?" Oh, it's because I'm hobbling everywhere. Yeah, it's real. It sucks. So that, I'm hoping I, that's my big way of entering the new decade is as a full-bodied person. Uh, and also, I think Able maybe body. on top of that, not to you know add on to what your opinion is, that you appreciate your able body when yes. it's healthy. Yes. That's a, a really great idea. Yeah, it's an actual sincere real thing that you have a sense of gratitude for when your body is healthy because we forget that it can break at any moment all over the place. Yep. Yep. That's great. <laughs> what a great answer. <laughs> That's mine too. Appreciate your body. Uh the best way to fight a hangover or diminish it or avoid it. I don't know even though you are going to get completely wasted. Okay. So, I didn't quite understand that sentence. So, um, so Ben Bosta wants to know the best way to fight a hangover or diminish it or avoid it. I don't know, even though you are going to get completely wasted. So that is inevitable that you're going to have a hangover. Um, so you can't, I mean, you can fight it. You can't diminish or avoid it. Um, I think the fight is uh, hydration and, you know, all of the classic just greasy foods, all of it. It's the three C's. It's a carbs, crapping, <laughs> and um, what's the third one? There's a third Complete. One. Cranial. <laughs> uh, no, it's carbs, crap, and... Uh, is this a real thing? Yeah, that I used to tell myself, and apparently it doesn't work. And then the other thing is those blowfish things. <laughs> that oh, that's really what good. I was going to... Yeah, there's those blowfish pills, non-spawn, yeah. that uh, actually... Fizzy tablets. Yeah, there's a series of fizzy tablets that you can take before you start drinking that supposedly help aid the hangover well, the these morning are after. The after, but you take it, the blowfish ones you take it the morning after, mm. and they also make you trip a little bit and see things. Okay. Um, Remember the McDonald's trip that I went on where I like was, it was right after, this is like, this is like the beginning of 2019. Mm-hmm. I vaguely, vaguly remember this. You took it too, and you also were a space <laughs> cadet. So, uh, but there's also like liquid IV. I've heard of from um, people on Instagram that it's like every one tablet in water is like the hydration of like three glasses of water. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Um, even if the placebo works, uh, go for it. Um, but honestly, it's just water. It's literally just water. I think, yeah, maybe don't. That's what the water brand I'm starting. It's literally just water. Like the box water? The, the... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. That already exists. Mm-hmm. The one that's the in one the that says milk carton water. that says just water. <laughs> yeah. Perfect marketing. Uh, how do I find new friends as a 26-year-old? You got to start throwing away the ones you got. Get rid of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> start with your mom and dad. Go out to New Year's with your new friends. Uh-huh. Uh, new f- friends and when you're 26, that's like, you should, that's a, that's a hard thing. Well, I think you don't, you don't know. There's too many, you gotta have stand. You gotta. Well, I've had this question a lot asked of me in a bunch of different realms. And I think the thing to remember is that everyone your age is also sort of looking for friends. Like mm-hmm. no one is completely content when saying like, this is um, my group is done. Because everyone's kind of moving through relationships in different ways. And so I think you kind of have to like, uh, easier said than done, put yourself out there. Actually, like if you see someone or hang with someone or talk to someone, they're like, this person kind of gets me. Okay, I choose you. Let's maybe do something else and see if we continue to get each other in a way. Yeah. And that they're reaching out to you and that you actually want to reach out to them and it's like reciprocated and stuff. That's mm-hmm. nice. And it's not one-sided. Yeah. That's a good time. Yeah. Also finding hobbies as an adult. I think there's also a whole art form to realizing when you don't want to be friends with somebody anymore and it's not not a mean thing. It's not like a blow up argument thing where like you sort of naturally drift away and then you naturally drift toward other people. Yeah. I think you pay attention to your own actions and then glean things from that. 
Like if you find yourself going to certain things or looking up certain things online that you find interesting, and then you end up exploring that and going in that direction, I think you can you can sort of stumble mm -hmm. toward a new social circle. Yeah. Do you think that makes sense? Yeah, it did. But also it sounded sarcastic, <laughs> didn't it? No, there's and there's your trigger warning that the sarcasm is not <laughs> uh it's not as deep as it seems. Okay, last question before we take a quick break. Should I shave my back from random McRand? Have you ever shaved your back? Shave in your back? Shaved no, your back? I don't have a hairy, I don't have a real hairy back. Okay. Humble brag. Hairy butt. Okay. <laughs> I've never Straight shaved up, your butt. butt. <laughs> I've never shaved my butt. There's still time. There is still time in 2019. I mean, that might be a resolution for 2020. I'm going to shave my butt. Yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year, babe. I wish you luck. I shaved my butt. Uh, but should someone shave their back? That, I have no opinion on that. I have. I couldn't have. I couldn't imagine answering that. <laughs> I really have no idea. If you want to, I guess. How? I. How do I, you do it? Do you get a back scratcher? And oh, I mean, that's a Shark Tank innovation. A back scratcher that has a razor on it, so you don't mm -hmm. have to get someone else to help you shave your back. <gasps> oh man, that has to exist already. That's, I mean, that's that Lori can sell that on QVC like that. If they can sell that little thing that clips onto the AC vent that holds the sauces, sauce-o-matic. sauce, -matic. sauce -matic. <laughs> Yeah. We've been watching a lot of Shark Tank, you guys. Okay, should you shave your back? Um, if you can, go for it. Uh, but remember that the maintenance is half the battle. Who Can I ask who asked? Is it a... Random McRand. Silly Billy. Okay. <laughs> if those a gentleman, I'm assuming? Uh, his avatar is extraordinarily dark. Got I it. cannot tell <laughs> what is in this picture. Got it. Uh, or hers or their avatar. Um, but should you shave your back? I mean, why not do it once? <laughs> try everything. Yeah, oh, no, they say sure. try everything twice. If you haven't shaved your back at least once, you haven't lived. Ugh. Now this reminds me of something I need to add to my to-do list. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we have more answers to your important 2020 New Year's questions here on Not Too Deep. We'll be right back. Not Too Deep. What's Grace Hybeck? Again, support for today's show comes from Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Do you want to start a new business? Do you want to showcase your work? Do you want to publish content? Do you want to sell some products or more? They are the tool for you. They have beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks so you can easily make a beautiful website by yourself. They also have powerful e-commerce functionality that lets you sell anything online and analytics that help you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. They empower millions of people from designers, lawyers, artists, gamers, even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real. So head to squarespace.com grace for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com grace. Offer code grace. We're back in. Elliot Morgan is here and we are answering some of your most um, interesting questions uh, for the start of 2020, the advice that you need to get your year off on the right foot. Here's an actual, a real question that I think is important. Um, J1... <laughs> Just repeat the back shaving question. Yeah, uh, should the back be shaven? Uh, J101210 says, is it worth the struggle to find a therapist? I've been dragging my feet to start the process. Let's dive in. You and I have both talked about this in, you've talked about this on The Valley Folk. Uh, I've talked about this in my own videos. I enjoy talking about it. You enjoy talking about it, I think. Yeah, the short we answer enjoy. is yes. Is it worth uh, the struggle to find a therapist? Yes. I would say so. Yeah, it's also okay to let therapists go and keep rolling through till you find... One well, that fits and one that works. That's the one thing that I didn't actually fully register when I first started looking for therapists is that it was so scary to me to even admit that I needed a therapist. So the first one that I went to was a recommendation from a friend and I was just like, cool, this is it. Mm -hmm. I don't even want to do this dance and find another therapist. I, it's too much for me to even commit to this singular person. 
And the reality is it's worth taking your time and actually like speed dating, vetting the person that makes sense and like actually works with you in the certain way. You start to find out what you want from a therapist. Yeah. It's like finding a physical trainer. Not that I know anything about that, but <laughs> if you were to find a physical trainer and expect to have like a built six pack in a week, you probably won't. But after a while of doing it for like, cause I've, I've been doing it for like two and a half, three years. Personal something training? Like that. Yeah. And it's just like, I'm assuming at some point I'm going to get muscles, but it's, <laughs> Well, jury's out, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it takes a long, it's taken, it took like two years before I was like, oh, this is having like a substantial effect uh, on my life, even though it wasn't like going and being like, I'm happy now. But how long did it take you to find the therapist that you are, have been consistent with? First one. Wow. But okay. I, have, <laughs> well, that's I uh, not helpful. <laughs> yeah. I did a lot of online uh, uh, Googling and then went oh, to Oh, so CMM. you did your like research beforehand. Yeah, yeah. And I looked them up and looked up a bunch of people and also mm -hmm. would like find, you know, other people's experience. Yeah, it was it was great. And I lucked out a lot. Yeah. Um, so I think it's worth just starting to do it. I mean, even if you do like what Elliot did, like the backend research of like doing it online and not having to like pay to do like a first session with everyone every time. Um, that's yeah. more than most people do. Mm -hmm. Most people just find the first person they go to them and they say, this is it. This is what therapy is. And therapists are different. Yeah. Yeah. And some of them are not good. Um, I really, yeah, I like talking about the whole therapy thing a lot, but I also feel like a lot of people, uh, like the whole, I love learning about the new stuff that I didn't know about myself that is bad that I get to like quietly kind of try to work on. It's like finding things and being like, oh, okay, I can be, I can fly off. I can be an asshole in this area. So I'm going to try not to be an asshole. And why am I, why was I being an asshole? And it's just fun to like explore all that stuff. Yeah. And once you have the, uh, time under your belt of working with the, uh, the same therapist, then they can hold you accountable because they know your patterns and know your history. They know all of this. Yeah. It's he not, just yells at me. I mean, that's a dad, but mm -hmm. you know, he dads. Me. <laughs> I live in Kansas city, but I'm thinking of moving back to my hometown in Ohio. Can you talk me out of it? This is not from Mitchell Davis, but it sounds <laughs> like it. I was just talking about him at the, at the office. Cool story. Yeah, he's sweet, <laughs> and everybody loves him. It was, you know, when you like happy got when you love gossip about somebody. Anyway, uh, yeah, I live in Kansas City. I don't know. I can't, I don't know where those two places are. I'm thinking of moving back. To, okay, so I live in one place. I'm thinking of moving back to my hometown. Can you talk me out of it? What's well, wrong about what's wrong with going back to the hometown? Uh, if they want to be talked out of it, it seems like they're giving up on the place that they're in right now. So that feels like you need to discover some things you like about the place that you're in. If you moved away from your hometown, that for some reason, right? Okay. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give an honest, like opinion. Please. I think that this person is looking for some kind of direction that they already kind of know the direction so i think that the question here's the question uh -huh. is if the new environment that they're living in that is the kansas city uh -huh. is beneficial to them on a emotional level then staying there will probably mean it's going to continue to suck for a little bit and it might grow more as a person whereas the home might represent safety. Uh, a safety and a comfort zone that yeah. they're looking for reasons not to go back to but the opposite could also be true so who knows it could be that being away is the comfort zone and dealing with their problems they left behind at home is the, the character building emotionally like it's self improving process so the, we don't know so Jonathan Troyer, you're on your own, sir. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Okay. Is it supposed to be really sincere advice? I feel like that it's was a mix. too. Okay. This is what Not Too Deep is. It's a mix of complete dumb and sometimes real sweet. It's perfect. Wonderful. Uh, how do you protect yourself from burning out too quickly, i.e. job, school, relationships, etc.? cetera? Whew. I mean, you can't protect yourself from that other than monitoring yourself on a regular mm -hmm. basis, other than checking in and going, am I tired? Am I frustrated? Why? Like constant inner, inner investigation, I think. Mm -hmm. And like honesty with yourself and going, cool, I'm 
I'm frustrated with my job. I'm burning out on my job. Okay, let me sit back and reevaluate this. If you can. I mean, everyone's parameters are totally different. I think, yeah. And I think if you end up like in a situation where you, things are going well, but you're, and your job is going well and you're getting like accolades, but you're still exhausted and still not impressed by it, then it might be like a little bit of, that might be like a good sign that you're. Then you just go do mushrooms and out. everything gets better. Mushrooms, <laughs> mushrooms don't, <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Best that advice. Might help. <laughs> best advice for dealing with bad roommates. I haven't had roommates for, ooh, like 10 years, maybe. Yeah. I've, I have never had a bad roommate. Really? Yeah, no. I mean, I last roommate was an Irish philosopher, so he was <laughs> he was delightful, and he kept everything way too clean. Uh, well, what you really lucked out. Yeah, it was um, great. I don't know. I mean, I I would say, can I do like house rules or house meetings? That's kind of yeah, cute. They say Kaylee says mine have been horrible this semester. I can barely stand to be home. Uh, oh, well, man, if you're that sucks. If you're having roommates by semester, you know that there's an end date to this, right? Like this is what you have to deal with for right now um, and that you can leave. I think, yeah, if there are house rules in some way, I don't know. Um, Form alliances. Yeah. vote. I mean, create a voting system for uh, who gets voted out of the apartment. Home alone them. Create a big brother as mm -hmm. an apartment. Film them secretly. <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, you know. Threaten. Okay. Okay. Uh, Blackmail. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of illegalities that you can uh, mm -hmm. explore. My deteriorating body can't handle spicy foods anymore. <laughs> what are sneaky ways I can incorporate them back into my diet? A really great question sneaky for 2020. <laughs> for the start of 2020, this is important. Um, how do you sneak spicy back into a body that is deteriorating? First of all, I think you should see a doctor. <laughs> I think that, that I don't want to give you any advice that could cause more inflammation, though it, it sounds like is happening. Are you, I mean, is the idea that you're going to fool your body into thinking that the spicy That's what food I do. isn't in there? When I eat cake icing for breakfast, I fool my body that this is do like... you put jalapenos in it? I'm like, yeah, this is like cream cheese, basically. And cream cheese goes on bagels and bagels are breakfast food. So this is breakfast food. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I don't, I mean, you could put it in, you could chop up your little jalapenos, put them in a burger patty. I think also, yeah, that's true. I think also spicy foods, uh, your body can't handle spicy foods anymore. What about smoky? You know, smoky's not spicy, Ooh. but it's still got that, mm -hmm. I don't know. Watch the Food Network, I guess. Chili, like mild chili, like they cumin go. and all that. Yeah, cumin, cumin, that's the <laughs> obvious answer. Uh, which is worse, regret over something done or wondering what if? Who? I think wondering what if. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the, I don't know. Oh no, I, I think the is regret from, is definitely something that you did that's bad. I think it's uh, this is from chicken broth, dude. <laughs> So it's a very serious question. <laughs> Which is worse, regret over something done or wondering what if? This is hard for that me. That sounds like forgiveness over permission kind of deal. I, yeah, like I guess Like you're going to so. do something bad. So. It depends like what it is that you regret. Do you regret like farting in the elevator with someone on a first date? Or do you regret ask, like potentially not asking that person out yeah. on a first date? Like, like. If you're hurting someone with it, then it's probably better. Yeah, like if you murdered someone, that, that regret is going to be more than wondering what if you murdered someone. Yeah, it might be better to wonder what if rather than actually murder. But if it comes down to, yeah, like asking somebody out, then I... the wondering what if is also maybe not even a, a bad thing because it allows you to feel you can go through the fantasy of what it would have been like. And that keeps you from actually having to move back to Ohio. I'm getting it mixed up. but you get There you go. Chicken broth dude, I hope. Some of that helps you in some way. <laughs> that was that was the big, the big. Uh, I want that one written down on a quote. Yeah, get it in your book. That's the, yeah, I'm proud of that one. Uh, best way to get through the holidays alone. Well, seeing as this has come out uh, in the beginning of January, if you went through the holidays alone, congrats, you did it. Um, However, you did it was the perfect way to do it. <laughs> you did it. And we're all collectively proud of you. But I think moving forward to get through the holidays alone, 
Um, I had holidays kind of alone last year. And the one cool thing, I was in LA for Thanksgiving and my friend Jocelyn and I both weren't doing anything. And she invited me over to make um, these care packages for women in homeless shelters on Thanksgiving night. And that's how we kind of both spent Thanksgiving alone. I was like, this is so nice. That's very beautiful. Yeah. And also that's a really good answer. Yeah. Volunteering is a very good. Well, like, you do it already. So it's, it's one of fun. those things that's like, uh, if you feel alone, a lot of other people do. And so if you can help, why not help? Yeah, I started doing that. That was my actually was my New Year's resolution last year was to do the, the volunteering stuff and then to not to try not to stop doing it. Well, look at you. That you was did what it. it was. Yeah, you, I had a real thing. You did. It wasn't it. just trying to not drink for a month, which I did not do. I mean, at some point, yeah. maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, there's still time. It's 2020. Uh, okay, we're going to take a break in one la after this last question, which is very lighthearted. Am I doing okay? Do you want... You're doing great. Okay. How do you approach relationship conflict? My husband likes to avoid it altogether, but sometimes there are things y'all just need to address. <laughs> How do you approach relationship conflict if someone wants to avoid it? Which is a classic Grace Helbig move. I was going to let you answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, the, I would put this on your shoulders. How do you approach relationship conflict, uh, relationship conflict, which is basically nice. what it is. It's shit conflict uh, with someone that avoids conflict at all costs. I try to bring it up as quickly as possible, I think, <laughs> like as quickly so it doesn't fester. Oh, that's true. Yeah. that you Partially don't... worried that you're going to let it fester. And then if I don't head it off at the pass, it's going to build yeah. and build and build. Well, that's, uh, I think, important because people that avoid conflict are usually not avoiding it. They're just letting their brain fester in it for a long time. Yeah. And we, I think you and I, if I may speak personally for a moment, have, you have our the trajectory of the quality of conflict that we have has gone up a lot. Uh, like it's a good from what it was. Oh, I thought you said, we've the, gotten into some... I thought you said the quantity of conflict. Oh, the qua oh did I? Is that what it sounded like I said? It sounded oh, like you said I the quantity personal, of conflict we've had has gone up. It, it, I'm like, it, uh... If I can get personal, us living together is a hellish nightmare of screaming. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, the trajectory has gotten better, I guess. Yeah, like it's gotten... Oh, and our ability to handle the, the quality com of the conflict. Yeah. The quality of conflict <laughs> compromise. Quantity. The quantity has also gone down. <laughs> All the numbers are good, Doc. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's gotten better because we we turned it less into being, you know, rah, 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 and more conversation based, which is yeah. Very nice. And that's something I've learned is that conflict doesn't have to be screaming. Conflict can be conversational, and that deflates a lot of the intensity around it that people that avoid conflict mm -hmm. are usually, um, you know, assuming is going to happen. Mm -hmm. That it's like this Goodyear blimp yep. <laughs> that's going to mm -hmm. be popped at any moment when it turns out. It could be, um, you know, like a, a deflated birthday balloon. Yeah. Fun for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> kind of lame. You're going to throw it out Non-threatening to anyone. Yeah. Like it did, it it's had trash. a purpose. Yeah, it should be thrown away. Yeah, and no one bats an eye at it. Okay, we're going to take one last break. And when we get back, um, guess what? We have more advice wow, for really your doing. 2020. Cool. We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. This week we have support from Buffy. Buffy makes bedding that is earth-friendly and cruelty-free. Their products are made using only sustainable and recycled materials, which makes them as soft on the planet as they are on your bed. And their latest product, The Breeze, is a comforter made from entirely 100% eucalyptus fibers to regulate temperature and keep you cool and comfortable all night long. It regulates temperature, which means there's no more night sweats. And as someone that does occasionally suffer from the night moisture, this has been a fantastic comforter. I love it so, so much. Like I said, it's made of eucalyptus fabric inside and out. It's softer than cotton and naturally soothes skin and is also hypoallergenic. In fact, its high thread count shuts out dust, mold, and mites for healthier sleeping environments. Buffy also offers a free trial. 
free trial. Try a comforter in your own bed for free, and if you don't love it, you can return it at no cost. Why not choose 100% plant-based bedding that's better for you and the earth? For $20 off your Buffy comforter, $20 off, visit Buffy.co and enter code NTD. That's Buffy.co and code NTD for $20 off your Buffy comforter. You guys, I really, really like this product. No, no, not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is supported by Third Love. Designed with measurements from millions of women, Third Love's bra styles are made to fit your life. They have over 80 bra sizes, but know that there's only one that matters, and it's yours. And I can say from experience, these are the most comfortable bras ever. And as someone that prefers comfort over discomfort like a weirdo, I'm all about them. It's hands down the most comfortable bra that you'll own. They have straps that don't slip. They have tagless labels. They have lightweight memory foam cups that mold to your shape. Plus, returns and exchanges are free and easy. And thanks to Third Love's perfect fit promise, every customer has 60 days to wear it, wash it, and put it to the test. And if you don't love it, return it, and they'll wash it and donate it to a woman in need. They know that there is a perfect bra for everyone. And right now, you're getting 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash grace now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash grace for 15% off today. We're back with Elliot Morgan and 2020 advice. Um, Okay. As always. We're doing great. We're doing great. (laughs) This is also a piece of advice that you should tell yourself whenever you feel a little stressed out. Just look in the mirror and say, we're doing great. Uh, We. We, the collective we. Um, Before we get into this last round of questions submitted via Twitter, of course, we have to check in on um, who would you, alive or dead, most want to throw cold spaghetti at? Um, Currently. Um... I would throw it at uh, babe. Uh, spoiler alert! Did you say babe? Baby, baby Yoda. Oh, oh, from the Mandalorian. I, I thought you were hungry. saying babe the pig. <laughs> no, babe the pig. <laughs> yeah. From from when we were eight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but no, instead- uh, baby Yoda. I would throw uh, cold spaghetti at baby Yoda as a snack, not as anything aggressive. And that way, maybe on the way, he could maybe stop at midair, make it look cool or whatever, make it look like a flying spaghetti monster. It's kind of funny joke that he would do. He's got a good sense of humor. That's the answer. Well, that's a great answer. What about you? Do you have to change? You have to do this every time. I don't have to answer answer? this. This is my podcast. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you. The other question, and I don't remember what your answer was last time to tell us your worst pants shitting story in three words or three small phrases. Mine, college jogging front lawn. But I cannot remember. Last time you were here, you were here with Joe Beretta, the Joe Beretta, the Joe Beretta, and I don't remember exactly what your story was, but. Whatever comes to mind. Worst pants shitting story in three words or three small phrases or a combination. Um, church, camp, <laughs> youth. Uh, I mean, that just implies it's young. <laughs> church, um, camp, youth? Church, I mean, <laughs> camp, crying. Okay. Yeah, that's a fun one. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's pants shitting or just you realizing, like, Jesus doesn't that's exist. That's a lot of night. <laughs> There's a lot of darkness that you can play There's with. a lot of things that could be a part of that three-word story. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Church okay. Camp <laughs> yeah, that tells Those a lot. Those are the three Cs that cause the, fix the hangover. You know, I really didn't think I was going to learn much more about you on this podcast, but turns out... There's Here we go. Always an opportunity. Uh-huh. Okay, back into these questions. All caps from Clara. I need to get into shape, girl. How do I do that with minimum effort, but in a healthy way and still drinking Red Bull? <laughs> Is Which, that, that's a little tiny you. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't realize that I had a you know a secondary Twitter account, uh, but this is all caps, and I think she's already drinking Red Bull. Um, <laughs> I need to get into shape. How do I do it with minimum effort? Ooh, that's going to be a problem because to get into shape, it takes kind of like a maximum effort to do it uh, and in a healthy way. Minimum effort is usually a non-healthy way to get into shape. So you got to kind of reconcile those two thoughts, I think, and realize if you want to do it in a healthy way, which you should do it in a healthy way, it's going to be a little bit more than minimum effort. What would be an unhealthy way? Like Like diet pills, which are fucking awful. And terrible, or like unneeded operations. Yeah, under the knife. Yeah, yeah. And you can also the you can you can do 
you can do it in a minimal amount of time more so than like you can cram a lot of effort into a small amount of time that usually helps like yeah. i like doing the things that last like half an hour oh yeah i mean there's a, but they still suck for that half an hour i thought you meant like uh the overall course of time of getting into shape being minimal no, the no, actual takes, like daily routine. Forever. There's yeah. tons of shit on YouTube on everything that has like 10 minute like mm -hmm. at home workouts. But yoga, yoga is kind of like, you ever <laughs> think about yoga? Yo, have Let's talk about, about yoga. yogurt and yoga. Uh -huh. uh, those seem like healthy things that the advertising Pilates. tells us. I feel like that's like a good, you feel nice when you're done, right? Mm -hmm. I guess, yeah, I guess. Have you done hot yoga? I'm sure you've talked no, about it. No, I will have a. Full pan I have a panic right, attack right, thinking right. about the idea of doing hot yoga. I'm sorry, Brad. It's too hot. It's an yoga in and general. Yoga. <laughs> yoga in general gives me anxiety because just it's a room of people on the verge of farting. And I hate wow. like my empathy levels go to the 10th mm -hmm. degree of like feeling for everyone that's trying to hold in a fart the whole time in we, a public situation. We just did the, um, to date this podcast a little bit, we did the 5K, the, the um, Jurassic Park. I believe I did the Jurassic Park in, 5K at me. Universal Studios. <laughs> well, I got to witness every person go by the, the yeah. finish line. But uh, yeah, there was, uh, it was one of those moments where mornings where I was having a hard time with my stomach oh. and I realized that I was outside and I just stopped caring about halfway in. Yeah, the, the breeze. Yeah. The breeze. And I was like, this is a perfect opportunity for me just to not trying to be rude, but just. So if they had hot point. yoga outdoors, then you would do it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is that, just yoga in the hot summer. hot yoga at Universal during a Jurassic Park theme park. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So yoga is the short answer for all of this. <laughs> Uh, graduating soon, how do you deal with the emotions of the ongoing question slash anxiety of what's next? Well, dang. Okay. Uh, how do you deal with the emotions of the ongoing question slash anxiety of what's next? Ooh, I mean, I think you can reframe the fact that uh, anxiety isn't a fear of what's next, but more an excitement for what's, what's next, that you're nervous about all of the possibilities. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's perfect. <laughs> and also what's next, you don't have to know. Yeah. You can just start to figure out. I don't think it's like a black and white answer of like, here's exactly what's next, unless you're like going to med school or something like that. But yeah. otherwise it's like, I'm going to start to figure out what's next. When you don't, when you have a big empty vacuum, it means that it, anything can pop, and when it does, it can be the most explosive, wonderful thing ever. You just have to hold the vacuum of not knowing and walk around with it until something pops. That sounds like I'm high. Yeah, it does. <laughs> that sounds great. On that same note, how do I find motivation in a job that I hate but am monetarily ob uh, obligated to keep? I think that's tough. Very tough. I think you start to find small moments of silly fun. I'm talking non-harmful office pranks. Yeah. Like whoopee cushions. You can't get fired for that. That makes everyone's day better. I don't know what you do for a living. She's but... like, I'm a surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> no one sits down <laughs> yeah. ever. And if they hear that kind of gastrointestinal noise, everyone yeah. is concerned. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I that's, think... a great, that's a great idea. Just make it fun for yourself. Make little games and... Yeah, like put... put... Put something in the water cooler. When See you, what happens. When you feel trapped like that and you're like having to do it because you got to have the the money and it sucks the whole time. That's like that just will. I, I think there's you. also a bit of like maybe start exploring, some, start trying to commit to doing little steps uh, to help you get out of that current job. That way, even if it doesn't work or even if it's mm -hmm. not an opportunity at that moment, you still feel a little bit of sense of reprieve. I wouldn't do it on the clock, but uh, do it when you get home and Google a little bit and try to you do You can also anything. do it on the clock. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if you're out of this job already, you can, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Uh, but also, if this job is... Uh, if you want to find motivation in this job, it doesn't sound like there is motivation there other than there's money coming in through it. Um, I think you can find fun in the job, whatever you're doing, and then find motivation to look for another job that, like you said, yeah. has more inspiring uh, after effects to it. When you moved out of your hometown to somewhere new, how long did it take to adjust? Hmm. <laughs> A while. I think LA took like I don't even think I'm fully adjusted. Really? Yeah. 
I'm I mean, free. like I know places to go. I know people here, yeah. but I think you're always going to have to kind of move with and evolve with whatever, mm-hmm. wherever you live. I would say, yeah, it took like a year and a half, two years for me to feel not scared to drive on the freeways here. Oh, really? And you came from Florida where you had a car. Yeah, it's just the, but it's so flat in Florida. And then here, the hills and everything just freaked me out. Like I couldn't, Uh. I couldn't believe. I was like, my car's going to fall off something. I didn't. I was like, this is insane. (laughs) Like gravity is going to cease to exist. Yeah, I'm going to tip over. And uh, so that was scary. And then learning where everything was is terrifying because it's Mm -hmm. a huge city. And then I thought I was going to, you know, get killed at some point. But yeah, I would say a year and a half, two years. Okay. But you're still not, you're. I mean, I think, uh, like uh, just in terms of like knowing where you are and feeling like relatively comfortable going places and that sort of thing. Yeah. I would say like a year or two, um, depending on like, if you move knowing people already, Mm -hmm. if you move kind of like knowing the place already, or if you're moving like blind to a brand new place. If you're living alone, if you're moving out of your parents' place and you're living alone for the first time, I feel like that's one of the most exciting times ever. Mm -hmm. It's real cool to figure out how to. Yeah. And it's it, like you're pretending to be an adult, but at the same time, you like kind of are one. Pretty neat. You kind of are one and you're like, you know, faking uh, it in life to everyone else. Yeah. You're kind of like pulling the wool over their eyes. That like, <laughs> hey, I'm an adult, but I'm not. Uh, does his experience as costume characters affect his views on 2020, just giving him a chance to plug holy shit? That's very sweet. Um, <laughs> affect my views on 2020. Uh yeah, no, it's it does. Yeah, no, it uh, uh, costume characters affect my views on 2020. That's very sweet. I, I have mean, a new it's... special out called Holy Shit that's available on many platforms. And by the time this comes out, it might be available on a real big one, but I don't know what yet. And so we'll see. Oh, but what you can a wonderfully check my vague, Instagram. not helpful plug. Yeah, it's called this. <laughs> and I don't know where it is. And I don't know how much it'll cost. And I don't know if it's available in Canada. But keep refreshing that Google search for Holy yeah. Shit. <laughs> Uh, but does your experience as costume characters affect your views on 2020? I miss being goofy so much. <laughs> do you really? I think it was so fun. It was such a cool thing to do when I was 18. I wouldn't How? want to go back and do it, but it's real sweet. How long did you do that for? Like two years. I was doing the math. It was right when Katrina hit. Okay. Like that was right in the middle of it then. And I, cause I remember being there and being like, what? What's going on? Huh? Okay, cool. And then like having to go out and be like, hey, I'm, I'm goofy. But, um, Jeez. Yeah, it was a uh, it was very very fun. They took us to the Make a Wish Foundation one time, mm-hmm. where they loaded us up in a van and then they brought us over to the center, and it was the sweetest thing in the world because Aww. it was a bunch of like just normal people, and then you put on the costumes, and these kids just like lost their minds. It was real sweet, and then Aww. they gave us like really nice breakfasts, and we're just very like, so nice. Like, <laughs> That's just, the thing that you remember. They were so the thankful, breakfast. and I was like, "We're not. This is just we got a side. Dude. Yeah, that was exactly what I remember. You know, what can you do? It's some of the kids, but I'm not gonna. You know, <laughs> was, there was one that was about yay high, and it no, but. It was very I appreciated the joy I brought to these children, but, but the I bacon. also loved the pancakes. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, do you have a good recipe for soup? No, but you've been making some great matzo ball soup yeah. lately. Big fan. Big fan. Do I have a great recipe? Absolutely not. So there's that on that. That turkey chili I made was pretty good, but that doesn't really count. Yeah, what's the soup and what's... I mean, we talked about this I with know. Joe Beretta. Um how can I make sure I have the best time in Vegas next year? All right, here we go. You been yeah. sleeping on this one? Finally, here comes Elliot's expertise. <laughs> All right, you're going to want to go to old Vegas. You're going to want to book your hotel uh, well in advance. If it's... you're not watching this podcast, he is fully gripped down on yes. his chair as if an earthquake is about Write to hit down. us at any time. <laughs> uh, uh, the hotels are super cheap. If it's during the week, it's like 30 or 40 bucks a night or something. And oh. if you can go to one of the old ones and get a suite there, it's just silly fun. And yeah, it's dirty and gross, uh, but that's part of the charm. Don't expect to have a lot of fun. Uh, don't expect it there to be a lot to do. Um, make sure your standards are as low as possible because you're walking into one of the filthiest places in the world. Mm-hmm. And and then accept it for all it is. Have a great time with your friends. Walk around, drink outside, feel cool, gamble a little bit. Don't gamble too much and uh, do the red snake on roulette if you get a chance. And there's also, um, before it gets completely wiped out of Vegas in, what is it, the plaza? <laughs> oh, yeah. The, the, I'm going to plug this because yeah. this is my favorite game of all time. It's tiny plastic ponies that you bet on them as they run around this racetrack. And it's like watching toys. It's like, imagine Toy Story 4, but you could bet on who wins. We went there. <laughs> we went to the downtown area specifically just to play that game because it's like the only one left in 
It was, I mean, I didn't want to see the Lady Gaga show. I didn't want to see Chris Angel. I wanted to see the tiny plastic ponies at the Plaza Hotel. And guess what? No one was there. (laughs) And they were perfect. And then you immediately won like 300 bucks. Yeah, then I lost it big time. You're very good at that game. Uh, What are things that were new for you in 2019 that you want to keep doing in 2020? That's it. I feel like there's been a lot of new stuff this year. And traveling has been really nice. Yeah. Do that more. Mm-hmm. Cool. Some of the stuff with Valley Folk <laughs> is cool. Yeah, you guys uh, you guys are doing some cool stuff over some there. Some of it we won't repeat. Yeah. A lot of it we will. I think that's I'm good. I'm excited about that. I think that's healthy and good and wonderful for everyone. Uh, I do recommend volunteering. People should try that. That's mm-hmm. another one. Keep doing that stuff. What about you? What did I do in 2019 that I want to keep doing in 2020? Cooking. You've been doing a lot of cooking. I actually like making food and also like making my the house better. You're... I learned how to grill. Yeah. It turns out is the easiest goddamn thing in the world. I know. That's the whole thing <laughs> that it's. It just looks like one giant explosive device to me, even though that's what a stove looks like too. But yeah. this looks way more like outside things could happen. Yep. And turns out. It's pretty okay, even though it's just one. You can see the propane tank. So it's mm-hmm. like watching potential disaster. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I think I'd like to grow more in 2020. You, you've been doing great work. Thanks. With the grill. <laughs> Dicing Thanks. up sausages and putting it into the ground turkey was a bold move. It didn't work out. You know what? You got you to gotta try and fail to learn to succeed. Uh, okay. Last question. Um, oh, okay. I'm oh. starting an internship abroad in the new year. Tips on how to make a good impression on my first day. I think this is a kind of a broad question. How do you make a good impression on your first day in a professional environment? Here's my answer. Okay. I think you stay in your car. You get, you show up early. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just stay in your car. It's like you never go and into the you office. You never go in. You change your career. You go home. You cry. Uh-huh. Uh, you stay in your car for a second. You breathe uh-huh. for a moment through your nose. You remember that everyone <laughs> in there, butt. got it. No one in there doesn't want to like you. Uh-huh. Everyone wants to like you. So you got that going for you. Yeah. And then you go in and you say hi to people. That's and a you great... make eye contact and you keep focusing on the fact that you're you. You're fine. Everyone's in there to have a good time. Don't make too much eye contact. No, don't be a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta... That's gotten me in trouble before and it's a bad deal. That's going to be the learning curve is finding the right amount of eye contact. But also that's a great point that no one wants to hate you. Like I, I don't, yeah. it's an easy concept, but I don't think it gets said out loud. And it's actually kind of very um, empowering to hear that out loud to be like, yeah, every job that I've ever worked at. And if someone came in and was new, I've never thought, can't wait to fucking yeah. hate this person and perfect. every single thing they represent. This person better rule. <laughs> <laughs> this person better fix my problems <laughs> or I'm going to be their problem. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's I, a, a stand up. That's what I do tell myself before stand up shows. Is before I go up, I go, okay, they probably just, they probably don't already hate me and probably don't want to hate me. They also Unless paid, it's a show in LA. And then, of course, they, everybody wants yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how we all operate. He keeps spilling water every time I. You're making a great impression. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you go in and you also realize that like impressions aren't totally made on the first day. Especially if you're going into a new mm-hmm. job, like you're going to be there. So this one day doesn't fully define your entire existence in this work environment. Yeah. So all you have to do is go and do your best and then slowly over time become more comfortable with everyone and everything you're doing. Yeah. You can start acting like you've been there for like a while and you just walk in, you pleasantly say hi to people. And then if you imagine that it's like a day in the middle of your experience or your employment, then maybe yeah. that, com- I don't know. Pants That's the worth boss. A shot. Pants the boss. Yeah. What's the worst that's going to happen? You get fired. You never have to make an impression at that job ever again. Mm -hmm. You're done. And then everyone gets to live with the legend that was this person that came (laughs) in and pants their boss day one and left. Elliot, thank you for being here. Thank you, Grace. I hope it was an okay 
This was wonderful. Thank you for having me on. A very nice start to 2020 here on Not Too Deep. Um, happy New Year. Happy holidays to everyone. Yeah. Um, still strange that we're recording this in November 18th, and but still happy 2020. If the world hasn't completely exploded, then this podcast will be up and live for you guys to listen to. Elliot, where can people find you? Where can they find the special? Where can they find Valley Folk? Uh, you can find Holy Shit uh, on uh, Amazon Prime Video, and you can find me at Instagram.com slash Elliot Morgan. Uh, uh, two L's, uh, two T's, and also at youtube.com slash the valley folk and patreon.com slash the valley folk, which is a little group that we do the, uh, that does uh, comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next time on an episode of Not Too Deep. Happy 2020. Goodbye. Too deep, too deep, too deep, not too deep. deep. With Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, camera operator Katrina Henning, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. <laughs> <laughs>